اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان اللعین الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین و بہی نستعین و افضل الصلاة والسلام على اشرف الخلق والمرسلین حبیب الہ العالمین المؤید احمد امجد ابو القاسم محمد وعلى اہل بیته الطیبین الطاہرین المعصومین واللعنت الدائم على اعدائهم وجاحدی امامتهم ومنکری فضائلهم ومناقبهم الى قیام یوم الدین القول منی فی جمیع الاشیاء قول آل محمد فیما اسرو و اعلنو و فیما بلغنی عنہم و فیما لم یبلغنی السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتو برادرز و سسترز The murder of Uthman ibn Affan A critical point within Islamic history Why? For one, I believe it exposes the reality of those who they call the companions. And I'm talking about those who call themselves Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Two, it collapses the false belief of Adalat al Sahaba. Three, it also collapses the point put forward by Da'wah boy or Da'wah man, whatever his name is. Why? He came forward and he has stated that the primary reason of the murder of Uthman was because of an individual by the name of Abdullah ibn Sabah. That he caused people or, or caused the uprise against Uthman ibn Affan. And that he is the founding father of Shiism. The one who originated it. So he states, I'm talking about Da'wah boy here now. Abdullah ibn Sabah is a Jewish man from Yemen. He appeared in the time of Uthman the third caliph, or as we like to say, the third tyrant. Now this is a critical point for our investigation, inshallah. Remember this, he appeared in the time of Uthman. He accepted Islam in the time of Uthman. He didn't want to become a Muslim, he's a hypocrite. He wanted to divide and conquer. Abdullah ibn Saba tried to spread, or as, like, uh, as Da'wama likes to put it, his filth, his belief, ideology and hijaz. But the Muslims didn't accept. So he went. He traveled to Sham. They also rejected. Went to Egypt to spread his religion there. After realizing, this, I'm, here I'm quoting everything, that he has stated with regards to Abdullah ibn Sabah and his involvement with the murder of Uthman and his movement in the time of Uthman. After realizing that he was unable to basically just come straight forward and give far-fetched beliefs where the people of Sham, the people of Basra, the people of Kufa, the people of Medina are unable to accept, he thought to start easy, basically, that's what he tries to say. So he starts, he starts by saying, after he says, after he first, after slowly bringing false, of the first false belief, Abdullah ibn Sabah started, uh, started saying that uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib is the successor of the Prophet. 
Then Da'wa boy states, Abdullah ibn Sabah started saying these things to lower the people to start realizing if Ali was meant to be caliph, they should what? Take down Uthman from the hukum, from the rulership. Then he continues that he started sending letters, forging letters in the name of Ali ibn Abi Talib Talha Zubair and so on. And then he discusses that he was the one that started cursing Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman. This is why the Shia do it now. And then he discusses, for example, that Rasulullah will return and he proves he tries to prove it to the people of Egypt. And this is how the concept of a Raja come. He also starts then, basically, he claims that three armies got to Medina, one from Egypt, one from Basra, one from Kufa, and they put Uthman in a siege in his home and later killed him. So this individual truly must have had some form of superpowers to be able to convince the masses. Or well, as Uthman, um, Uthman al-Khamis states, four of the companions deviated because of Abdullah ibn Sabah. What type of Sahaba are you talking about that an individual like that is deviating them? Adalat the Sahaba. So, him putting it forward, and of course he's brought this, this uh, fairy tale from the book Tariq al-Tabari. Now of course it's vital and important, these points that he puts forward. Why? Especially for them. Because it overshadows, it hides the true, the identity of the ones who truly killed Uthman ibn Affan. Because if the masses realize and find out who truly killed Uthman ibn Affan, then the concept of Adalat al-Sahaba, the justice of the Sahaba, collapses. And then they will research, why is he killing him? Why are they killing him? How could he? How could they? How could they have a difference of opinion? And it will only go back and back and back and back to realize that even there was many companions that turned against Abu Bakr ibn Abi Quhafa, the first tyrant. That's why. Now let us open up a court case. We will put Da'wa man here on the right. And we will also open we will open the discussion to try to identify the killers of Uthman ibn Affan. Because if, uh, if Dawa boy was lying, then he will be put in jail. Now this metaphorical jail will be what? Jahannam, unless he repents. Ibn Kathir, they love Ibn Kathir. In his Al-Bidayah wa Nihaya, volume 7, page 202. Ahmad ibn Hanbal, he narrates from Ahmad ibn Hanbal in, from his Musnad. From Ibn Umair. That Uthman during his siege looked at his, focus, pay attention now, looked at his companions. Why do you people want to kill me? He asked the question. Looked at his companions. He didn't look at Abdullah ibn Sabah and his great army. He looked at his companions. And slowly, slowly, the deeper we get into the discussion, the topic, the more we'll identify one by one the killers of Uthman ibn Affan. 
Now this has been recorded of course um, in the Musnad, uh, Ibn, Musnad Ahmad Ibn Hanbal in the version of Sheikh Ahmad Shakir. He declared it Sahih. Also in Al Bidaya wa Nihaya, volume 7, page 203. He also states from Ahmad ibn Hanbal his Musnad. Here ibn Kathir is narrating from Musnad Ahmad ibn Hanbal. Abu Salama ibn Abdul Rahman. He states, he heard, um, the narrator, sorry, says, he heard from Abu Salama, Abu Salama ibn Abdul Rahman that Uthman during his siege looked outside his palace and stated, please focus with me, in the name of Allah, I make an appeal to the person who saw the Holy Prophet on the day of Hira, Hira, when the mountain shook and he struck it with his foot. So the individuals that were outside the house of Uthman ibn Affan saw the companions because for the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah those who see the Prophet become companions. They saw the Prophet. So he's telling you saw the Prophet. I am appealing to you. How are you coming to kill me? Again Ahmad Shakir states that is Sahih. Sheikh Shu'aib Al Aranuti states it's Sahih also. Forgive me, the, his, uh, the word, of, the, his name, his pronunciation is difficult. Ibn Hajar Al Asqalani in his Al Isaba, volume 4, page 378. Focus now. It has been narrated with different renowned and sahih chains. Don't forget this is Amir al mumineen of Hadith. Sahih chains that when Uth Uthman was besieged, he besieged, so he was asking, he's appealing, he says he appealed the Sahaba for various things, because it was the Sahaba that were coming to kill him. And we will see further into the topic. al muttaqil Al-Hindi, volume 13, page 82. When the Egyptian forces land in, landed and began to talk ill of Uthman, he got to know about it and climbed on the pulpit and said, O Sahaba of the Prophet, O Sahaba of Prophet Muhammad, May Allah curse you for bad mouth in me. Next time an individual says to you, you Shia has cursed the Sahaba, tell him, no, I'm following the Sunnah of Uthman ibn Affan. He cursed the Sahaba, so I cursed the Sahaba. What's the problem? Or the Kufr, or for you to declare Kufr is only on the ones that declare Amir al Mu'mineen to be greater than Abu Bakr and Umar. Also, Ibn Athir. In his Gharib al Hadith wal Athar, volume 5, page 80, he states, Kill Na'thal, I'm coming for you, for you to see what, where Na'thal is coming. The Hadith, Kill Na'thal, or May Allah kill Na'thal, refers to Uthman. That happened from her, who's her, Aisha, when she got angry and went to Mecca. Tariq al Kamil, volume 3, page 100. Ibn Athir also. Ubaid ibn Abi Salma, who was a material relative of Aisha, met her as she was making her way to Medina. He said, Uthman has been killed and the people were without an Imam for eight days. To which Aisha asked, What did they do next? He replied, 
the people approached Ali and gave him bay'ah. So they gave allegiance to Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Aisha then said, take me back, take me back to Mecca. So she turned her face towards Mecca and said, Verily, Uthman was murdered innocently, and by Allah I shall avenge his blood. Ubaid then said, You are now calling Uthman innocent, even though it was you who said, Kill Na'thal the Jew. Yes, Aisha, daughter of Abu Bakr, called Uthman Na'thal the Jew. <coughs> she called the people for the killing of Uthman ibn Affan. She was involved in the killing of Uthman ibn Affan. This is your mother, Aisha. Ansab al-Ashraf, volume 6, page 192 to 193. When the situation became extremely grave, Uthman ordered Marwan ibn al-Hakam and Abdul Rahman ibn Atib or Ataba ibn Usayyid to try to persuade Aisha to stop cam campaigning against him. So she didn't even listen to her Khalifa. They went to her while she was preparing to leave for Mecca pilgrimage. And they told her, We pray that you stay in Medina and that Allah may save this man through you. Aisha said, I have prepared my means of transport, transportation and vowed, and vowed to perform the pilgrimage. By God, I shall not honor your request. I wish he was in one of my sacks so that I would carry him. And I would then throw him into the sea. This is your mother, Aisha. This is your mother, Aisha. This is the mother of murderers. Aqd al Farid, volume 2, page 90 91. Aisha went out weeping, saying, Uthman has been killed. Look how she deceives. Look at her. Uthman has been killed as one that is oppressed, Ammar ibn Yasir replied. Yesterday you were inciting people against him. Today you weep for him? It was only the other day you were calling people to kill him. Kill Na'fal the Jew. And now you're calling um, that Uthman was killed oppressed, that he was innocent. Also in Aqd al-Farid, same volume, volume 2, page 93. Al Mughira ibn Shu'ba approached Aisha and said to him, and she said to him, sorry, In Jamal, some of the arrows that were fired nearly pierced my skin. Right? We actually have a hadith in uh, Kitab Al Amali for Shaykh Al Mufid, where she was actually pierced. There was an arrow that hit her. Mughira, Mughira repri replied, If only an arrow had killed you. That would have an, have acted as a penalty for that, for the fact that you had incited the people to kill Uthman. Ruhama abaynahum, huh? That they say that they were merciful with each other. They were murdering each other. Where's Abdullah ibn Saba? Ya Jahil, where's Abdullah ibn Saba? Tabaqat al-Kubra for Ibn Sa'd, volume 3, page 82. Masruq, he's one of the tabi'een, said to Aisha, Uthman died because of you. You wrote to people and incited them against him. This individual Blamed Aisha for the killing of Uthman. Again, Aqd al Farid. Volume 2, page 210. 
Marwan approached Aisha and said, Uthman died because of you. You wrote to people and incited them against him. Here Marwan never thought Abdullah ibn Saba forged. What are you keeping hidden? What, what are you hiding from the people? Da'wah boy, tell them. Tell them, the Sahaba, that we love, that we must follow, and the ones who if we disown, dissociate from, you'll be a kafir. Tell them, isn't it? That you, it is you and your scholars that state those, anyone that degrades even the Sahaba is a kafir, zindiq. Abdullah ibn Saba never forged, never occurred. And we will come to the topic of Abdullah ibn Saba and the narrations that discuss his involvement in the murder and movement against Uthman ibn Affan, inshallah, in the next episode. Al-Dhahabi in Seer A'lam al-Nubala. So Yahya ibn Sa'id, he narrates from his uncle. That Marwan shot Talha with an arrow and killed him. Marwan is a sah uh, is part is of the companions. Then he looked at Aban, son of who Uthman ibn Affan, and said, "I have spared you from one of the murderers of your father." See Alam al Nubala, Volume One, Page Thirty Six. Al Juwayriya ibn Asma. Al Dhahabi in his Al Kashif, the one uh, your teacher Abdul Rahman Hassan didn't know existed. Al Kashif, volume 1, page 299. Thiqa. Ibn Hajar says, Saduq. Taqrib al Tahdib, volume 1, page 168. Yahya bin Sa'id, also Thabit in Al Kashif, volume 2, page 336, uh, 366. Also, Ibn Hajar al Asqalani in his Taqrib, Al Tahdib, volume 2, page 303. Thiqa. Yahya, um, sorry, Yazid ibn Hayyan. So he's Yahya bin Sa'id's uncle. Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani in his Taqrib al-Ta'dib, volume 2, page 323, Thiqa. Al-Dhahabi says in Al-Kashif, Thiqa. Also, if you refer back to the book of Tariq al-Madina, volume 4, page 1169. That Auf ibn Abi Jamila, he narrates, the most offensive Sahabi against Uthman was Talha. The most individual that was telling that was offensive against Uthman was who? Talha. Let's look at the chain. Muhammad ibn Mansur al Makki. Al Dhahabi in his Al Kashif hasn't, cited, he hasn't stated any objections towards him. Ibn Hajar al Asqalani in his Taqrib al Tahdib Thiqa, volume 2, page 136. Al Albani states in his Silsilat al Sahiha, volume 5, page 133. He is counted among the Rajal of Bukhari and Muslim. Ja'far ibn Sulaiman in Al Kashif, Thiqa, Taqrib al Tahdib, Volume 1, page 162, Saduq. Auf ibn Abi Jamila, Ibn Hajar al Asqalani again, Thiqa, 
in his Taqrib al Tahdeeb, Volume 1, page 759. Also, Al Dhahabi in his Mizan al Atidal, Volume 3, page 305, he authenticates him. So, let's go to Tariq al Tabari now, Volume 15, page 199. Ibn Abbas, I entered Uthman's presence during the attack on his house and talked with him for an hour. He said, come Ibn Ayyash and he took me by the hand and had me listen to what the people were saying at the door. We heard some say, what are you waiting for? While others were saying, wait, perhaps he will repent. While the two of us were standing there behind the door. Talha ibn Ubaidullah passed by and said, where is Ibn Udays? Udays. He was told he is over there. Ibn Udays came to Talha and whispered something with him and then went back to his associates and said, do not let anyone go in, so to Uthman's house, to see this man or leave his house. Uthman said to me, these are the orders of Talha. Uthman ibn Affan before his death is blaming Talha as shown here. He's telling the he's telling Ibn Abbas or Ibn Ayyash that Talha is ordering them not to let anyone in or out. Why is Talha doing this? It's the question you need to be asking yourself. For it is Dawa boy or Dawa man, the one that has lied to you and made it seem as if it was. Abdullah ibn the Saba that caused all of this. He continued, Oh God, protect me from Talha, for he has provoked all these people against me. By God, I hope nothing will come of it and that his own blood will be shed. Talha has abused me lawfully, unlawfully, sorry. Then he narrates a hadith by Rasulullah. Uthman ibn Affan before his death blamed Talha. The Tabi'een, the Sahaba blamed Aisha and Talha so far. Again, Tariq al-Tabari. This is the English edition. You can find it in kalamullah.com just for the ones that want to find it. Volume 16, page 79. When Talha and Zubair set out, when Talha and Zubair and Aisha set out and noticed that Talha preferred to sit alone and would flick his beard against his chest. So I said to him, Abu Muhammad, I see that you prefer to sit alone and keep flicking your beard against your chest. Is there something you dislike? Do you, basically says, do you want to sit down and talk? al ibn Waqas then says, he replied to me, we were all united against others. But now we have become two mountains of iron, each seeking to finish the other. Focus now. Pay attention to this critical words of uh, Talha. Sorry. There was indeed something I did against Uthman, and my penalty for it can be nothing less than giving my, giving my blood spilled in the course of seeking vengeance for his blood. So he's, he's admitting, he's admitting 
So right now I can just turn off the court case and just say oh, I found uh, a few of the I have identified some of the killers of Uthman. Da'wah boy, you're a liar. Repent. Repent or you're going with them. Let's look at the chain. Ahmed ibn Mansur. One of the thuqat in Tariq al-Islam, volume 20, page 57. Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, Taqrib al tahdib volume 1, page 47, he also says thiqa. Yahya ibn Ma'in, Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, Taqrib al tahdib volume 2, page 316. Thiqah. Also, al Dhahabi says, Imam of the Muhaddithin in Al Kashif. Hisham ibn Yusuf, the next in the Sanad. Al Dhahabi says, Hujja ibn Hajar al Asqalani says in his Taqrib al Tahdib, volume 2, page 268. Thiqah. Abdullah ibn Musa'ib Al-Albani says Hassan al-Hadith in his Silsalat al-Sahiha Volume 4, page 443 Ibn Imam Ibn Habban He includes him in his book Al-Thuqat, Volume 7, page 56 Musa Ibn Uqba Dhahibi said Thiqa in his Al Kashif. Ibn Hajar al Asqalani in his Taqrib al Tahdib, volume 2, page 226. Thiqa. Al Qama ibn Waqqas ibn Hajar al Asqalani, Thiqa Thabit in his Taqrib al Tahdib, volume 1, page 687. Also, Dhahibi in Al Kashif. Thiqa. Now, let's go to the another narration that will make it more clear the involvement of Talha. Qais ibn Abi Hazim narrates that a man had visited Talha during the attack against Uthman and requested that he intervene to prevent the death of Uthman. Talha replied, No, by Allah. La. Kalla. Not until Bani Umayya surrenders, surrender the right of their own accord. In ta this is in Tariq ibn Asakir, volume 39, page 403. Everyone in the chain. Either Saduq or Thiqa. There's no way out of it. In the book Al Ansab al Ashraf, again, we mentioned this book before, volume 2, page 292. Al Zuhri said, Al Zubair and Talha, when they got the control of the situation, what situation? The attack on Uthman. No Abdullah ibn Sabah. None of the Sabaiyya. You're not hearing no Sabaiyya. Kulla, the, the names of your companions. When Talha, when Zubair and Talha, when they got control of the situation, Talha prevented water from being delivered to Uthman. Even water they didn't give him. Even water, they didn't give Uthman ibn Affan. Also, everyone in the chain, thiqa. Everyone in the chain, thiqa. Again, as Zuhri, in the book, 
Tariq al-Tabari. The news that 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 it that is of the seventy who were killed with Al Abdi at Al Basra reached Ali, so he advanced with twelve thousand men and came to Basra. So this is when Aisha Talha Zubair murdered the ambassador, the governor of Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, and they took over, killed men, innocent people. We will come to all these points in another episode, inshallah, to show you the reality of these individuals. When the forces confronted each other, Ali, Ali went out on his horse and called out to Al-Zubayr, and the two men and the two of them confronted each other. Ali said to Al Zubair, Are you asking me for compensation for the blood of Uthman when it was you who killed him? A question that must be asked here. We all agree, both Shia and those who call themselves Ahlus Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Agree that Ali ibn Abi Talib never lies. Ali ibn Abi Talib always speaks the truth. That we agree upon. Is he lying here when he says, Ya Zubair, it was you who killed him. Then Amir al Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, continue, I ask Allah and his power right now to give a hateful punishment. To who among us who was the severest in opposing Uthman? Ali ibn Abi Talib, your fourth caliph, has stated that it was Zubair that killed him. Now we've identified how many killers. We know in the general statement that it was the companions or there was many of the companions that were attacking the house of Uthman ibn Affan but we wanted more specifics or like we like to say in the UK we wanted the big dogs Talha, Zubair, Mama Aisha right the mother of believers Aisha have you ever heard of a mother that murders her children. Again, in the chain, Thiqa, Albani, Dhahbi, one after another, half of, of his time, Thiqa, the chain is accepted to the least. Now, let's go to a specific individual. Jabala, Ibn Amru al-Asadi Jabala Ibn Amru al-Asadi In Tariq al-Tabari, volume 15, page 182 Uthman passed by Jabala Ibn Amru al-Asadi As he sat in his courtyard holding a rope Jabala said, you na'thal. Of course. Your mother Asha has been teaching them how to talk to their caliph. So they did it. You na'thal by God, I shall kill you. I shall car carry you off on a scab-covered camel and send you to a blazing fire. Another time when Uthman was standing on the pulpit, Jabala forced him to get off. Inzal, get down. Again, Amr ibn Sa'd in Tariq al-Tabari, volume 15, on the same page as the one before, 182. The first man who dared to insult Uthman was Jabala ibn Amr or Amru al-Asadi. 
once while he was sitting among his kinsmen, holding a rope in his hand, Uthman passed by or greeting them as he was passing by and they greeted him in return. And then Jabala said, why do you answer a man who did such and such thing? Uh, Jabala then approached Uthman and said, by God, I will throw you. I will throw this rope around your neck unless you abandon your personal out, entourage or outrage. What outrage? What entourage? Asked Uthman. By God, I do not choose favorites among the people. Jabala answered, Marwan, Muawiyah, and Abdullah ibn Amr. And Abdullah ibn Sa'd, all of these you have favoured. Among them are men who are condemned in the Qur'an. Subhanallah. Jabala, these are the companions of Rasulullah. What do you mean they are condemned in the Qur'an? Men, should bl uh, men whose blood the Messenger of Allah has declared lawful. Uthman departed and the people continued to talk spitefully about him to this day. What does Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani in Al-Isaba, volume 1, page 566, what does he state? What does he say about Jabala? He witnessed Uhud. So he's of the people that was with Rasulullah from the time of Uhud. And this is how they spoke to each other. This is how this individual, this so-called companion, incited people to kill Uthman ibn Affan. Also, Ibn Abd al-Barr, or Ibn Abd al-Birr, as some like to say, in his Al-Istaab, volume 1, page 236, one of the jurists, one of the fuqaha of the Sahaba. See, one by one, it is getting clearer and clearer that this individual of Abdullah ibn Saba from the authentic reports within history tell us that he had nothing to do with the murder of Uthman ibn Affan. While in reality, it is the likes of Talha, Zubair, Aisha, Jabala, and other companions that were involved in the killing of Uthman ibn Affan. Abdul Rahman is another companion. Abdul Rahman ibn Udays al Balawi. In Tabaqat al Kubra for Ibn Sa'd. Volume 3, page 71. The Egyptians who attacked Uthman were 600 and were led by who? Abdul Rahman ibn Udays al Balawi and Amr ibn Hamq al Khuza'i. We will see who he is. Was he of the companions or not? Be patient with me. Ibn Hajar al Asqalani in his Al Isaba, volume 4, page 281. Al Barqi and others said that he was uh, of those who gave allegiance under the tree. Bayat al Radwan. Ibn Yunus said that he was of those who gave bay'ah under the tree, witnessed the victory of Egypt, participated in it, and were among the knights. And then he came, and then he became the general of the army that attacked Uthman. Abdul Rahman ibn Udays al Balawi was of the general, the general of the army that attacked Uthman. 
and he was with where of those who gave allegiance under the tree radiyallahu anhuma ha radiyallahu anhum for all of them may allah be pleased for all of them al bidaya wa nihaya volume 7 page 179 after killing uthman <coughs> his murderers tried to remove his head cut his head the women began to shout and beat their faces Oh, so beating your face and crying is of the sunnah of the woman of Uthman ibn Affan. Two wives of Uthman, namely Nayla and Umm al banin and his daughters were amongst them. Ibn Uday said, leave Uthman. They left him and they looted whatever was in their house. Abdul Rahman ibn Udays al Balawi. Ibn Asakir in Tariq Dimashq, volume 35, page 107. He is a Sahabi. And he was among those who gave bay'ah under the tree. Bay'ah and gave under the tree as well. Ustul Ghaba, volume 3, page 309. Abdul Rahman ibn Udays al Balawi. He mentions a whole his his forefathers, his grandfather, his father, and so on. This is his lineage. Ibn Manda, Ibn Manda, and Abu Naim. He is a Balawi. He he had companionship. He witnessed Bayat al Rudwan. And he gave bay'ah during it. And he was the commander of the army which marched from Egypt to attack Uthman ibn Affan when he was murdered. Ibn Sa'd in his Tabaqat al-Kubra, volume 7, volume 7, page 509. Abdul Rahman ibn Udays al Balawi was among those who accompanied the Prophet and heard from him, and he was of those who marched to attack siege Uthman until he got killed. He, Abdul Rahman, was a commander among them. Where was uh, Abdullah ibn Sabah? Where was the Sabaiya? Unless you're going to tell me that these companions that were fooled by him are absolute donkeys. How are you taking your religion from an individual that can be deceived so quickly? How are you accepting that individuals, individuals like this, are a hujjah authority upon you and that you must follow them they murder each other they deviate so easily even your statements if we was to accept because one way or another it's a, lo it's a losing battle for you why? now listen to me that one man one thing first thing is no, Abdullah ibn Sabah, you take back your word, Abdullah ibn Sabah didn't exist in the time of Uthman ibn Affan or there is no authentic narrations or reports that tell us that Abdullah ibn Sabah was involved in the murder of Uthman ibn Affan. It'd still be a losing battle. Why? Because it will show your Sahaba murdered him. If you say Abdullah ibn Sabah was involved and these donkeys that you call the companions and you call they are authority on you, then the con your concept or your belief, which is of your primary beliefs, Adalat al-Sahaba collapses, falls. Another uh, individual, 
عمرو ابن بديل الخزاع الخزاعي عمرو ابن بديل الخزاعي to be precise it is narrated now this is in the book تاريخ المدينة volume 4 page 1303 جحيم I witnessed that Am Amr ibn Badil al-Khaza'i and Al-Tajabi entered on Uthman. One of them stabbed him with the blade and the other struck him with a sword and they killed him. And the chain is thicker after thicker after thicker. Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani records in Al-Isaba, volume 4, page 600, 606, Al-Tabarani said he is a Sahabi. And he is amongst those who marched against Uthman from Egypt. Now these are only some of the companions that I have identified for you. Only some. Where did you get the idea or the opinion that Abdullah ibn Saba is the one that caused the murder and he was the one, the main one that was involved in the murder of Uthman ibn Affan? Here, You will have to either, like I said, say he didn't um, he didn't exist in the time of Uthman ibn Affan, and that your companions have murdered your third caliph, which also collapses Adalat al Sahaba, or you say that. Abdullah ibn Sabah was involved in the killing of Uthman ibn Affan and he made some of the Sahaba deviate and murder Uthman ibn Affan that also collapses Adalat al Sahaba. It's a win win situation for me. You are obliged now, Da'wah boy, you and your companions, or at least you, because it's you that's in the video, to come forward and repent. You're obliged. Or you, you're going to be put in jail. Which is the metaphorical, in this court case, yeah, I mean in a metaphorical sense, Jahannam. You have to repent. You have misinformed the masses. Either way, the companions were involved in the killing of Uthman ibn Affan. Abdullah ibn Sabah there or not there? But if he was there, it will show not just the collapse of Adalat al-Sahaba, but it will also show how these so-called companions had in reality no belief. Just as it stated by, stated by Abi Abdullah al-Sadiq salam whoever enters this religion will leave through, whoever enters this religion through men, will leave this religion through men. Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, he teaches us a vital important point. Even if you used to say, I don't accept this hadith, from an intellectual rational standpoint, you have to accept it. He states, truth is not known by men. Know the truth first, then you know who abides by it. You and your scholars have stopped even the research into the biography of the companions to see should we take their religion? Should we take their ahadith? Are they trustworthy? Are they just or not? But subhanallah, subhanallah, when an individual becomes stubborn, 
even if a miracle happens in front of them, they will never change. Like I said, you have to come forward, repent. Say, I am a jahil. Me, Dawa boy, I am a jahil. وصلى الله على محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين